Well, joining us now to discuss the significance of this latest trading connection is Anthony Chan, the chief economist for Chase. Anthony, always good to have you. Glad to be here. So, Anthony, China approving the Hong Kong Shenzhen exchange. No real details have been provided yet. When do you expect this to actually launch? Well, as it gets closer, we're looking at another three or four months, more likely four months before this actually is started. But the good news is that we're moving in that direction. We knew for a long, long time it was going to happen, and now officially announced it's very positive. Uh, certainly a forward step. Now, the Shenzhen market, very similar to the NASDAQ in that it's tech-heavy and has a lot of companies focused on the so-called new economy. So what is the significance of this being opened? That's the most exciting part of this announcement, Michelle, because that is the future of China. When you look at the Shenzhen market, 20% is technology. You got clean air technologies. You got all this stuff that is actually going to represent the shift from a manufacturing to a more consumer-based economy. This is the area that investors want to focus on, and this is the opportunity that's being created for them. So why would foreign investors be interested? They will be interested because over the next five years, eight years, these are the kinds of companies that are actually going to grow. When you look at the Shanghai equity market, mostly composed of state-owned banks and oil companies, those companies are not going to grow as fast as these are as these companies will. So that's where the money is going to be in the returns. From a foreign investor perspective, though, there are interesting regulations in China. No day trading, ban on short selling, interesting circuit breakers that are imposed. How do you see those impacting foreign interests? Well, Michelle, there's no question that these things will serve as sort of a mitigating factor. And some people are going to say we have to curb our enthusiasm. But keep in mind, those are the current regulations. Before, we didn't even have Shenzhen and Hong Kong, and now we do. So these regulations could also go the way uh, on the, the way of the wayside. So you, to the extent that those things happen, you, you'll see more enthusiasm. Do you see things like the daily quota being lifted, for example? I think that that will come. The fact that they actually have no more caps on how much you can actually accumulate, that in itself is pretty innovative, and that's exciting. And that wasn't true in the previous agreement. Well, that was a big step forward as part of this announcement, lifting the limit on foreign investment. What do you make of that? How significant is that? I think it's significant because now investors can actually ex um, uh, express their true convictions uh, in the market. If they want to have more shares, they no longer are limited by that. But the real significance is that the Chinese authorities do not seem to be all that concerned with capital outflows or the movement of capital. So they're moving in that direction. And that has to be a very positive step. Now, the big question is, why did the financial markets in China didn't react more positively? And the answer is, we're not in the middle of a bull market. The Shenzhen and the Shanghai equity markets are down double digit. One is down 13 percent and the other one is down 12 percent on a year to day basis. So in a world where there is not a bull market, obviously there's not going to be a lot of enthusiasm. But these are important seeds that are being planted. And when the economy starts to recover and the bull market starts going, the fact that all these things are in place is going to be very positive. Well, Anthony, one thing that could certainly spark a rally is inclusion in the MSCI index. So far, for the last three years, MSCI has not included Chinese H shares. Do you think that this could be a game changer now? I think that the question is when, not if, if this is going to happen. And this is a, a necessary and important step in the direction of MSCI actually including China in their emerging market indices. And guess what? If that happens or when it happens, it's going to attract billions of dollars into that financial market and further diversify the investor base. Well, Anthony, because the, the Shenzhen market is focused on these new economy type of companies, the tech, the ones that are appealing to the consumer base, do you see interest in that then taking away interest from the Shanghai Stock Exchange? Could that be the effect? There's no question there's going to be a lot more interest in this market. But over time, financial markets really have to allow shares of things that are going to show growth to go move higher and those that are experiencing less growth to basically not uh, move as high. That's just the nature of financial markets. And if that happens, that's actually a successful story. Well, what is the biggest takeaway from the Shanghai Hong Kong Stock Connect experience that you expect will be translated to the Shenzhen Hong Kong stock I think the number one factor that we have here is that 
we are now moving in the direction of being a lot more friendly to investors. And I think that that in itself will cause the authorities over time to lift some of those restrictions. I don't think these things are going to happen overnight. I don't think they're going to allow day trading. I don't even think they're going to allow short selling immediately. But over time, as uh, the authorities feel more comfortable that the financial markets are operating, they will ease some of these restri restrictions gradually, not overnight, but gradually. All right. As always, thanks for your insight. Anthony Chan, Chief Economist at Chase.